So we're talking about how to walk out this Christian life here on earth. How, how do I actually do it? We found out that we are to walk in love, we're to walk in light, and today I want to talk about how to walk in wisdom. Walk in wisdom. Look with me at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 15. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay, wait a minute. Do you mean that you and I can know what the, the will of the Lord is? Well, yes, actually in Romans chapter 2 and verse, no, chapter 12 and verse 2, it says, do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God is. You and I prove what the good and perfect and acceptable uh, will of God is. We can know what the will of God is, is when we have our minds renewed um, and, and not operate according to the world. So here it's saying that we're to walk not as fools but as wise redeeming the time and then it goes on to say that you do not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is and again we need to have our minds renewed amen well here's one of the problems we have is because what is wisdom if we look at first Corinthians let's do that just go to first Corinthians and let's go to uh, chapter Oh, 1, verse 27. But God has chosen the foolish things of the world to put, you shame, put to shame the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to put to shame the things which are mighty, and the base things of the world, and the things which are despised, God has chosen, and the things which are not to bring to nothing the things that are, watch this, that no flesh should glory in his presence. In other words, God's, God uses the foolishness of this wor world to confound the wide. wise. Why? Because the people who think they're wise get really puffed up in that. They think, oh, man, I, I know this better than, than God does. Well, he uses the foolishness of the world to confound the wise. Amen. So what kind of wisdom should we use here? Well, here in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, let's look at something. It says, um, uh, verse 6, However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Remember, those, that part is in darkness, and remember, we're children of light. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the hidden wisdom, which was ordained before the ages for our glory. And in verse 10, but God has revealed them, what? The wisdom. Uh, and the mysteries to us through his spirit, for his spirit teaches or searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So in other words, we're talking about a different kind of wisdom here. This wisdom is for the mature, and it takes a relationship with the Holy Spirit in order for it to be revealed to us. Now, prior to that, it, it's hidden, and you can't, you can't see it. But once you become mature and start growing in Christ, those hidden things are revealed to us. And that's the wisdom of God. Look with me at um, James chapter 3. No, chapter, yeah, 3. And look at verse 13. It says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Now remember, God takes the foolish things of the earth to confound the wise. So you may be wise in carnal things, in natural things, but are you wise in supernatural things? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. So what kind of wisdom is that? That's this earthly wisdom. The Bible tells us that knowledge puffs up. In other words, if you have a bunch of knowledge about natural things, it puffs up. Love edifies. And so if, if we have knowledge of this earth and the things of this earth and we think we're all of that, it causes us to, um, uh, to have bitter envy and self-seeking. In other words, uh, I'm trying to prove myself all of that and more, right? Uh, this wisdom does not descend from above. It's earthly, sensual, and demonic.
For where there is self-seeking and envy, uh, or, or well, I'm sorry, for where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every uh, evil thing are there. So when you're operating according to the world, it says confusion and everything is, every evil thing is there. Why? Well, because God uses the foolish things of the earth to confound the wise. God's wisdom is different. Now look with me in verse 17. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy, for mercy and good fruits, without partiality, without hypocrisy. So in other words, this is a whole different type of wisdom. Why? Because it's based on love. That's why it's pure. That's why it's peaceable. That's why it's gentle. That's why it's willing to yield. Why? Because it's based on God's kingdom. And God's kingdom is a love kingdom, right? Because God is love. It's all based on that agape love. I love you even when you're not lovable. I even love you to the point that I will make a sacrifice to fix what you've done wrong. See, that's the kind of love that this is based upon, and that kind of wisdom is pure, and all the rest of the things it said, they're pure and peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, and so forth. That's how we're to walk our lives. That's the wisdom that we function in. I'm Keith Brown. This is Tack Room Devotional. Jesus loves you. I love you. I pray that God would richly bless you as you diligently seek him and serve him.